Welcome back to Candlekeep. I have an offer for you, a mission which is high risk and high reward. What would you do if I were to offer your group a wish? Enough to help a genie battle an archmage to earn his freedom? Don't plan on taking on this adventure unless you're at least 10th level. G'day team, I'm Luke from Big Game Small Pieces and I'm here to quickly run through the one-shot uh, Zikrin Zamphirian Tome. And so this is from Candlekeep Mysteries and I'm going to assume that you have read the adventure. I'm also going to assume that you're going to try run it as a three to four hour one-shot. And I'm also going to assume that you're using Faerunian lore. Uh, now, the aim of this is not to simply just recap and tell you what happens in the adventure. Uh, that's why I assume you've read it. Uh, the idea is to present you with changes and options to tweak it and just crank it all the way up to 11 and a half. So, <clears throat> first of all, we start off with the group in Candlekeep, in which case a book is open in front of them because they are willing to take the book. That's fine. And Gazre Azam's uh, head pops out and manifests and talks to the group. Now, in this case, they've used an air gin. I would recommend keeping with that because they are chaotic good. If you're thinking of changing it, be aware that the Earth Dao are neutral evil, that the Fire Afriti are lawful evil, and the Water Marid are chaotic neutral. So air gin is probably the best to uh, keep it. Ties in with the Cloud Giant Fortress. And unless you've got a good reason, I would leave that exactly as is. Now, uh, after that, we get told to go on the quest and adventures head south uh, along Candle Keep, along the Sword Coast, and you can present them with a Wyvern fight. Now, uh, intro and Wyvern fight, that's going to cost you about an hour. So if, as long as you can afford that, you're still good to go. You might have to cull things later on. But some things to consider are if the group simply roll a stealth check, maybe they can circumvent the area where the Wyverns were. Uh, potentially they could also do something a little more. They're high level now, they're level 10. So consider allowing them, if they so choose, to try and capture, tame uh, a wyvern. I know taming a wild animal is very unlikely, but it's fantasy, it's a one shot. So uh, definitely consider doing something like that. It would be cool for this group to then ride wyverns around for the adventure and potentially any random encounters you want to add are now aerial random encounters. So, and for my for what I want to do with the fortress later, keep that in the back of your mind. So uh, they're fighting on the cliffs, potentially, if you're having a wyvern fight. And that cliff edge is be a really cool way to have the fight because the group have to be somewhat near it to try and spot the coral bommy. But also, these wyverns could be circling along and zipping up and trying to just snatch a character and fly off with them sort of thing and drop them over the ocean. I'd recommend the ocean or drop them into trees where they won't just go splat because you don't just want to kill your party straight up. But uh, it could be more advantageous for them to drop them in the water and then just keep swooping and attacking while the group's trying to swim and, and such. So it could, could become an interesting combat. Failing that, just the wyverns using the cover of the cliff and then having to pop up so the characters have to stand on the cliff edge to shoot down at them, which will limit where they can go and then make it easier when the wyverns pop up to attack. So like, cool fight scene, uh, if you've got time. Then, as I said, the group go looking for this bronze dragon. So um, Ash Garleth, uh, the reason why he is a bronze dragon and not another type of dragon for uh, bronze dragons are coastal. They're lawful good. They're CR8. They're actively opposed to tyranny, likes corals, pearls, history books. It, and they're just, they're, they're right on where they need to be for this character. I, if your group want to fight a dragon, I would try and let them, give them some sort of knowledge check nature or something to know that this is not a bad dragon. You should be able to deal with them. Though they might be prideful and still be dragons, they aren't bad dragons. Um, if you wanted a bad dragon, there are no uh, chromatic dragons that are known for being coastal, beach coastal. Um, you could potentially use a young topaz dragon, which is chaotic neutral and coastal. That could tie in if you want a dragon fight here, but I like the RP of this fight, and I think it's definitely worth keeping it at that. And if the team, if uh, Ashgalif wants to team up with them, 
he can team up with them and potentially fly a couple of them who can't fly under their own steam and get them to uh, the next point. So you could skip the, the climb fights and you can just go straight to the uh, castle. Remember, you're keeping an eye on time. And this encounter is probably going to take 15 to uh, an hour, only we're up to for some groups who are uh, particularly cautious. Uh, the corpses in the water, eh, they were there. I didn't really, you don't need them. Uh, there could just be some loot tucked in the corner from some old corpses that do nothing. But uh, yeah, it's there if you've got the time. If, you, if, you're, if you're doing this over two sessions, you can keep the wyverns and the corpses, not a problem. Uh, then you get to the climb. If the group aren't riding wyverns, uh, aren't uh, being um, blown by the dragon, haven't use, uh, aren't using uh, Gazria's arm's wind walk to move them all, then potentially they're on the climb. If you choose to, the wing cobalts and the abominable yeti can be there, but it's going to suck into your time. And by this time, you have to be very closely watching it. If you're doing this over two sessions, this would work not too badly because this would, if you'd have to time yourself how much time you've left in this session, out of combat, and then finish it when they get there and they see the keep. That would be a good finishing point for a two session uh, game. Then uh, in the climb, you also, if you're looking for more encounters, you could instead swap out the Abominable Yeti with a Frost Salamander, uh, uh, Remores, uh, or a, a Young White Dragon could all be uh, good encounters to uh, tuck into uh, this mountainous climb in the cold. Finally, we get to the Cloud Keep. And for this one, I had, there's two ways. Like I played it as per the book, and they went past, and they just walked past the, uh, the ghost um, cloud giants. Didn't really bother them. Talked to one or two, and then just moved on. Found the wizard, had the fight in the bottom. It was good. It could be better. It could be so much better. This has such potential. Could you imagine, just as the group get there, there is an elemental cannon out the front as a sentry gun to uh, protect the castle and anyone's approach, to let the wizard work in peace for what he's trying to complete, which will be complete when the group get there. So the group will arrive and the gun will uh, be on sentry and just start shooting at the characters. So they're diving in snow drifts and trying to advance as these boys run up, then these guys move, then those guys move, as they keep pepper potting their way up to get to the uh, cannon for the Malise to start taking it on while the range fighters are trying to pick it off from a distance. Meanwhile, as soon as that ha starts to happen, the cloud starts spilling out from the, near the, underneath the main door and surrounding the keep. And all of a sudden the keep starts to dislodge and starts to take off. And the whole thing starts to taking off into the sky. Now the characters are sprinting towards it to try to jump on. As they clamber up the side, as snow's pouring off, as they're trying to swim against the snow, characters who couldn't make it, they're throwing ropes down for. People are trying to fly and, and piggyback people up and get them up there, teleport. Uh, even you're using uh, the genie, Gazra Azam's uh, wind walk down there to bring them up, or anyone who missed out. Or if they had wyverns, they're running back for their wyverns to then jump on to chase after this flying castle, flying through the skies. That's why this would have been a fantastic pause point. And then as the uh, castle is flying through the sky, the group are following on their winged beasts or their broomsticks or their magic carpets, whatever they took to uh, get themselves into the skies. Ghost giants that were now stuck in uh, a melancholy repeat state are awake and realize what's going on now and that things are going good for them. And they're on the battlements cheering and they see dragons or wyverns or with characters following and they realize that they're trying to stop them. So they start hurling boulders at the group. While meanwhile, there's an aerial battle going on while the castle's flying, heading wherever the wizard wants to take them. North, I'd say. It's pretty plain and open if you head in that direction. And the wizard might have plans to try and rule one of the large cities by parking his flying fortress over top and threatening that he'll just drop it on a city if they don't meet his demands. Meanwhile, uh, the group are chasing after him. Uh, and surgeon team might even land on and start going around trying to hack at the giants while the range team are shooting from flying beasts, uh, chasing after. They fight their way in. They get to the, uh, the wizard. He could be downstairs, or he could, I put him in this case, upstairs, and put him on the uh, next to the bedroom so that uh, he had an elemental cannon, he's crystal powered there, and he had his elemental protection servants and things like that up because he knew that the characters were coming. And it's a slog fight down into the uh, castle and then through the castle to get to the wizard to kit him. And if anyone happens to destroy that crystal, the whole thing drops out of the sky as all of a sudden the ground just leaves and the group are in suspended falling. And their final wish 
as the genie now realize the wizard's dead and they've killed the crystal and whatever happened to the genie what do you want and they're like get us to safety boom <laughs> it could be an intense adventure and i've ran it uh, as the book said and then with my changes and the changes you should have seen the looks on the players faces as i said the keep takes off and starts to fly away from them now the biggest trick in these one shots is knowing what to cut so potentially you've got to cut the wyverns and the uh, the yetis and winged kobolds because they're nothing tied to the story you go in, you talk to the bronze dragon, you go up there and you fight this big thing. You would spend two, one and a half, two hours, at least an hour, if not two hours, fighting on the fortress. Stone giants have got like uh, ghost uh, cloud giants, have got like 100 hit points and a reasonable AC. Uh, it's a tough battle. Uh, particularly, my group fought one cannon and four giants, um, with this, two of the giants backing up the first two. And it took like an hour, hour and a half. Like it was a complex battle of moving parts and things. And it started to feel like a little bit of a slog. When you give things like that too many hit points and the group aren't really big damage dealers, it becomes a slog. And that's what you've got to realize. Like, ah, oh, I can feel it. It's becoming a slog. I need to change some tactics. Maybe make some cloud giants retreat, run away, disappear, disappear into the earth and end the combat because they don't want to end their own life. Um, and hurry the wizard up. And potentially, I had a group even want to go looking further into other rooms, and I thought, no, that's where I can have the wizard come out on the half broken away uh, floor and look down onto the roofless section and taunt them, tell them to come on up and send some elementals down to fight them as he then backs away. The group then decide are they going to fight out elementals while the wizard powers himself up and waits for them, or are the people going to charge off after the wizard while people are left there fighting elementals? Fantastic. Absolutely great adventure. And I would almost recommend running it over two sessions, playing about six to eight hours to get everything out of this that you possibly could. Now, one point of note is if you're using the genie to help fight or the dragon or wyverns to help fight now that they've been tamed, give the stat sheets out, tell other people to run them. You're doing enough as the GM. So have that prepared or tell someone to look it up and they're now going to play it for you because you don't have the time to juggle this many things and then it doesn't become so much your bad guys against your good guys it becomes characters they're playing against your bad guys so it's better that way i've often found also remember that Jin shouldn't be able to attack the wizard but he could attack the elementals and help move wounded casualties around the battlefield and then maneuver about and such so don't have him attack the wizard. Have him help cover some of the other uh, monsters while some of the others are going for the wizard. And uh, I think you'll have a great time with this adventure. I rank it very highly and strongly recommend it. It's right up at the level, especially with a flying castle, that 10th level characters should be playing. So if you're looking for a 10th level adventure, this is the one shot or two shot for you. And I highly recommend. I hope you've enjoyed these uh, reviews and me talking about uh, these adventures. Uh, I thoroughly have enjoyed running them, and I've got a number of these uh, on my channel. I've got adventure reviews, subclass reviews, and some D&D talks. Check it all out. If you've made it this far, like and subscribe, and I will catch you later at the gaming table.